Welcome back. Today we're in After Effects again, looking at live halftone effects, kind of similar to what's on the screen right now. Quickly, if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, the project file and assets are linked in the description. Also, special thanks to Cotton Bro on Pexels for the source footage used in this tutorial. I've included the HD format file in the project folder. But if you'd like to check out the full 4K version and some of his other work, again, links in the description. That said, let's get started. So I'm going to create a new comp here and uh, just call it um, main. For this project, I'm just doing 1920 by 1080. I've got my composition. I also need to bring in my footage, of course. So I can right click here in the project window and go to import file and i'm just going to click that and click open for now we just need our footage i'm going to drag that down into the timeline here i'm also going to create a solid so i can right click and go to new solid or you can just hit command y on a mac or control y on windows and it'll bring up new solid settings i'm going to call this dot and I'm gonna set the background color to black. I do want to make sure that the size is correct though. So I'm gonna set it 50 pixels wide and 50 pixels tall. So this is gonna be the basis for our halftone. Click okay and we should get this little square right in the middle of our composition. In the effects and presets panel, which if you don't see that, you might need to go to window and open it from there. Uh, I'm just gonna search for gradient and what I'm looking for is just a regular under generate gradient ramp. I'll add that to the dot. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. I'm gonna set this to a radial ramp instead of a linear ramp. And then I also wanna make sure that the start is right in the center. Right now it's centered horizontally, but not vertically. If we look at our values, it's 25 pixels in the X and zero in the Y. So I'm just gonna set it to 25 X and 25 Y. That way I should put it right in the center of our 50 by 50 pixel solid. I'm also gonna swap colors. It's kind of tough to do a proper CMYK color separation because After Effects doesn't understand subtractive colors. So that's why our dot is gonna be white and everything else are negative or our, uh, our transparency is going to be black in this case. I'm gonna jump back out to fit. I'm also going to add a motion tile effect. So in my effects, I'm just gonna type out motion under stylize, it's motion tile. For the width, I'm just gonna bring this up so it kind of covers the entire thing. We don't necessarily have to cover the entire screen, but we do need to make sure that our subject is covered. For the height, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna cover up the entire thing here, at least so the subject is covered. And that's pretty good. Next, in phase, I'm gonna set that to 180. And then we can adjust whether it's adjusting horizontally or vertically. Right now it's adjusting vertically, but if you want it to adjust horizontally. Now, to control the size of our dots, we just need to uh, change the tile width and height. I can drag the size down, but you can see doing this and keeping it matched to the same size, we essentially have to adjust two values. So a quick way to remedy that is just pop open our effects open motion tile. And here, the tile height, I'm gonna use the pick whip and just point it to the tile width. That way, they're both the same number. Next thing to do, so that we can kind of see how this is going to work, is I'm gonna change the dots blend mode from normal to hard mix. And if you don't see this blend mode option, you might need to toggle switches and modes. So now we've got our half tone effect going on. But in order to kind of you know, maybe we don't want the whole background, we just want our subject. We can do that really quickly uh, with a roto brush effect. We need to be in the layer view. So double click on the, the layer and you can see it's opened up our footage here in kind of a separate tab. A lot of times people end up in this tab and they're like, wait, where the hell did my composition go? It's just because they're in the layer view. And we can do some different things in this layer view that we can't do in the composition view. And one of those is add a roto brush effect. So I'm gonna scrub through this. I don't want the whole thing. I just wanna find kind of like a point of interest, like right here where she blinks, that's kind of interesting. So I'm gonna put my in point or my beginning point 
at about six seconds and to click the in point button at the bottom there. And I'm gonna go down to 10 seconds is probably good. I'll set that to the out point or ending. So our in and out point is set. And the reason we do this is that we don't want it to calculate the roto brush for the entire clip. We just want this one specific part. I'm gonna go up to my tools here, click on the roto brush tool. And we should see this green circle. Just quickly, you can hold command on Mac and drag to make it larger. I think it would be control on Windows. Uh, and if you want to switch between adding and subtracting, you just hold the option key on Mac or alt on Windows. And I'm going to go ahead and just paint a very precise, exact outline matching every single detailed contour of her face all the way around. Perfect. And let Rotobrush actually do the real work and find all of the edges. Now, this is pretty close. There's some things that we need to fix. So I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller. Again, holding Command and dragging or Control if you're on Windows. Hold Option to subtract. We're gonna say, you know what? We don't want that little bit right there. So you can get rid of that. But we do wanna keep the hair back here. So we've got our outline. Everything looks pretty good. To get it to calculate that for the remaining frames, you just need to hit spacebar. And you can see it's playing very slowly as it looks at each frame and tries to figure out where our subject is. If there's an issue, and I'm not saying there's an issue right now, but if for instance, it starts to cut in somewhere, you can always press spacebar, just paint a little bit, say, oh, we wanna keep that little bit of hair right there, and then press spacebar again. Now we've got our mask. We need to go back to our composition. I'm gonna temporarily hide our dots for a second, but we can see that it's applied this effect and it's applied this roto brush effect. And we can come in here and kind of adjust things. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the edge back down and just cut into the subject a little bit. So we get some smoother lines there. You can feather it just a little bit. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I wanna kind of clean this up. I want to um, make it so that we're not having to recalculate this constantly. If you wanna keep your um, control of your roto brush, you don't have to pre-render it, but for the sake of stability and the and speed of rendering this, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna right click this, pre-compose. Uh, I'm gonna move all attributes into a new composition. So that includes the uh, roto brush. Everything's gonna get calculated as part of the composition. I'm gonna call this the pre-compose face. Click okay. In this uh, this comp, so this comp is exactly the length of our footage. I'm gonna go to composition, pre-render, and that's fine. It's pre-compose face.mov. I'm just gonna hit render. And this will just save us some time so that we don't have to wait for it to calculate the roto brush over and over and over again. Poof, and through the magic of video editing, it rendered instantly. I'm gonna set the end point to the end of our work area. I'm just gonna hit N on the keyboard. And now I'm gonna bring the dots back and we're gonna have a look at how this is kind of affecting our person. The subject, it looks fine, but then we've got all of these extra dots out here, which don't look great, they're still just kind of blurry. And the reason that that's happening is probably best explained if I turn transparency grid back on. I'm gonna turn the dots off for a second and turn on transparency grid. So when we added our roto brush, essentially what we did was create a an alpha channel so that this is transparent out here where the grid is, and then we have opaque pixels here. The thing is hard mix doesn't understand alpha channel. It only understands red, green, and blue channels. So when it sees alpha channel, it just says, well, I guess you want dots. To fix that, it's pretty easy. All we need to do is just add a solid in the back. So I'm gonna hit Command Y or Control Y if you're on Windows, call it black solid. I'm gonna make sure this is comp size. So it's filling the entire comp. So 1920 by 1080 there, or whatever size you happen to be working at. Click OK, and then just drag this underneath everything else. So now we can see our, our dots are fine. So that's it for this effect and the basic setup. If you wanna get the black and white look like I have in the intro thumbnail, you just need to add the black and white color correction effect to it. You can use the different colors to adjust 
the balance of kind of where the dots are and kind of get different shapes. You can do a lot of different things, layering multiple copies of this on top of each other, and also using a tint effect to assign the white dots to a different color instead of white. You can set them to a magenta or cyan or something like that. It is worth noting that you're not gonna get a particularly accurate CMYK look this way for the simple fact that CMYK is a subtractive color system and After Effects just it doesn't understand subtractive and you could spend a lot of time trying to map out the colors and try to make it uh, precise, but it's probably faster to go ahead and just do that in Photoshop since Photoshop has the ability to do proper CMYK color separations. And I'll leave a link uh, down below to a tutorial that actually shows how to, to export frames to Photoshop, apply that CMYK effect to them, and then export them back out into After Effects. But other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this kind of playing at hyperspeed so that you can see what I end up doing, just kind of layering multiple copies of this on top of each other. And if you found that helpful, uh, drop a like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, definitely sign up for notifications. And also, if you'd like to download the project file or uh, check out any of the assets, like the video from Cotton Bro that I used in this project, uh, again, I'll put a link down in the description for that. If you'd like to see ad-free versions of these tutorials and or get early access to this kind of stuff, I will be putting things up on Patreon and also on my website in different... Um, versions. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.